pastors online, I greet you well tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I am honored to be in this elevation room with all God's wonderful people. I greet you well tonight, saints, in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And in case you forget it, in case you're wondering about it, let me say again, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, I am continuing on in the teaching. We're looking at um, backsliding. And the man of God has tasked me to look at uh, this specific consequences, amen, of backsliding as it relates to uh, our eternal salvation, the dangers and consequences to my eternal salvation. Um, there are many debates surrounding doctrines such as one save, always save, and for those who have been around, you would have heard some of those debates. Um, you have people who believe that you, you know, once saved, it's always saved. You have persons who argue against that and various theologians present various arguments and counter arguments come by another set of theologian and the debate continues but we need only to look to scripture and really delve into the word of god through the lens of the holy spirit who authored the book and we can see clearly what scripture has to say about such topic. Why am I going there as I look at backsliding and the dangers and the consequences as it relates to one's eternal salvation is that based on scripture, it is clear. And we are gonna look at some of those uh, scripture references tonight. It is clear that one can begin a love walk with the Lord our savior, Jesus Christ and end up falling away, end up being disqualified, amen? And so we want to be mindful and we want to take care that we ensure that we are checking our love walk with our Lord daily and we are walking in tandem with the Holy Spirit Amen. I want to look at a few verses tonight. I want to look at some verses of scripture and I want to delve into some matters tonight. So we clearly see that and Prophet has looked at some of the stages of backsliding. He has looked at apostasy we clearly see it is established that one can start out well, start going forward. Uh, the parable of the sower going out and sowing the seed comes to mind. You talk about those who received the word and were excited and immediately the word sprang up and then the cures of life choke it. We see those who got the word and birds came uh, and devoured it. And we see where good ground was made and the word took root and grew and bear fruit. So it is fully established that one can start well, mean well, and end up a shipwreck. Worse, 
end up totally lost and separated from Jesus Christ for time and eternity. So the short answer is that backsliding pose a real danger to our eternal salvation. Backsliding poses a real threat to us making it into the kingdom of God, to us hearing the words, well done, the good and faithful servant, enter into the rest of your Lord. Backsliding poses a real threat. It is a clear and present danger to that future that we are all looking forward to. And we do well to take heed, mighty God. I want to look at four things tonight that we must be watchful of so that we don't go down into the path of back, um, go down backsliding street. We don't go down the path of being in a backslidden state. Uh, if we are, or we know somebody who is there, uh, we encourage them to come forth, to move forward, or if ourselves, we are in that position, by God's grace tonight and the encouraging words that you'll hear, we shake ourselves with the, by the power of the Holy Spirit and move forward, move forward. Four things I want to look at tonight as we talk about the dangers and the consequences to my eternal salvation. The first one I want to look at tonight is that we must keep progressing. And for this, I state it this way, we must graduate in the spirit of God. We must graduate in the spirit of God. And while we are graduating, and keeping going up from level to level, we must avoid suspended animation. And I'm gonna show you that there's a danger, there's a deception in being dormant. Because you see, in the walk with Christ, in our relationship with Christ, in our journey of salvation, there's no real such thing as being dormant. It's either you're going forward or you're backsliding. There's no middle ground where one is in suspended animation. No, 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 no. The minute progression stops, regression sets in. The minute progression stops, regression sets in. So don't be deceived by those who, who, who make it seem as, oh boy, I'm, I'm, I'm on a little holiday. Or just give yourself a break. We're only humans. No, 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 no. I'm just going through a little phase. No, 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 my dear beloved. Once progression or graduation or advancing has ceased, you're in reverse. You have begun to backslide. You have begun the reverse process and it is dangerous. Watch this. The Bible tells us that we must get past the elementary stuff. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. We must get past the elementary stage in the teaching about Christ. Advancing, watch that word, advancing, constantly moving ahead onto maturity and perfection and spiritual completeness. Doing this, going forward, doing this without laying Again, a foundation of repentance from dead works 
and of faith toward God and of the teaching about washing and ritual purification and such the likes, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These are all important matters in which we ought to be proficient. Paul, the writer here for Hebrews says, in, in, in which you should have been proficient long ago. You should, have a, you should have a firm understanding of these doctrines and these principles of scripture and being, and, and, being, and being propelled from that platform, you're moving on to maturity. You're moving up, my God. You're moving on into the, the university of the Holy Ghost as he takes you into deeper stuff concerning God, concerning Christ Jesus our Lord. The Apostle Paul is saying here, long ago, you should have been proficient in these things. And he say, listen, well, and, we, and we will do this. That is, we will per, per, per proceed to maturity if God permits. And watch me, brethren, in this season, God is permitting it. God's desire for you and I is that we move from this deception called stagnancy, because what really what it is, is reversion, it's going back, and we move, we press on into deeper stuff concerning God, deeper stuff concerning his word. Not laying again the foundation and arguing about were you baptized in the name of the Father, Son, or the Holy Spirit? Or were you baptized in the name of Jesus? Did you speak in tongues when you were baptized? And, and, and rudimentary stuff. Come on, by now, if you are still uncertain about the basic, of the, the, the salvation you have received from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, get to a teacher. Get to the place where you can be discipled. Come on, log on to our sound doctrine from God's chosen servant. Those of you who are in the elevation room, God has provided through his servant someone who is dispensing deep stuff. Ah, and when he's recouped and you have questions, touch base with him. Mighty God, uh, touch base with uh, Pastor Diane, amen, or, uh, and, and other men and women of God who God has connected you to. But don't be in this uh, a constant rehashing of the rudimentary. Come on, we have been called to graduation. We have been, we are called. No wonder this room is named the elevation room. We are called to elevation. Mighty God, we are called to wade in the in the vast ocean. Mighty God, that is God's word. The vast depths, that is God himself. Mighty God, we must be so overwhelmed that we are moving, that, 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 that we're not wading, but we are swimming out into the deep things of God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We are taking on new challenges. We are taking on new horizon. Because watch this. When we are there waddling, mighty God. When we are there wading at the shore and going around in circle concerning the rudimentary things, mighty God, and there's no sign of progression, you are mighty God. You become a target. You become a prime target for the enemy to snatch away. Mighty God, you become a prime target for the enemy to send some serious, grievous arrows at 
in order to wound you, mighty God, in order to sow doubts, in order to sow unbelief, to get you to start to doubt the very salvation you receive from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mighty God, let me tell you that a lot of backsliding, a lot of regression starts at this stage where people are still going around in circles and, and, and not coming to a concrete, uh, a concretized position concerning these rudimentary aspects of the faith. And then the enemy begin to send the, the false teachers and deceivers who begin to speak things and, 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 and start nonsense. And before you know it, they are, they are, these folks are in a backslidden state. Come on, graduating the spirit. Come on, tell yourself that if you have a diploma in the Holy Ghost, you're going for your bachelor's. Come on, Makasekete. Tell yourself if you have a, have a bachelor's, you're going for a master's in the Holy Spirit. Come on, mighty God, mighty God. No wonder, brethren, and don't be hard on yourself when you go among certain believers and you're uncomfortable because the level that you are and you are you're desiring and you are you are pu you're pushing towards some some of the the believers in your circle might not be at that level and what you find is is a sort of tug on your spirit a sort of pulling down come on you've got to you've got to you've got to detach from that company and move in company that are people who are seeking elevation in the Holy Spirit. Not laying again the foundation. Not, 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 not uncertain concerning, uh, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> when I was in high school, I remember I, I, I had a, argument one time. I was a young Christian then. I had an argument one time with, uh, uh, we were in IFCF. Those of you who know Interschool Christians Fellowship, I was at an IFCF meeting and there was a young man there who is a Pentecostal. And we started an argument discussing doctrinal issues and he said to me you are not saved you are not saved <laughs> because you were baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and i looked at him by i tell you the lord was doing some maturing work then i looked at him and i said brethren why are we arguing about these you know it just dawned on me then uh, and I and I said to him at that point in the in the in the argument, I said, why are we arguing about the minor issues? I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to to the Father um, for salvation? Because you know they are, they are not into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit um, thing. So. I said to him, he said, yes, he answered in the affirmative. And I said, so do I. I believe that there is no other way but Jesus. He is the only way, the only truth, and, all, and the only life. I said, that's a major thing we agree on. Come on, that's, that's the major. Let's focus on the major. And I tell you, that seemed to have gotten him even more rumpled. And he said, listen, you're going to hell. <laughs> you're going to hell. Because, listen, suppose I, suppose the Lord wasn't maturing me then. Mighty God. That, that seed of doubt. My God, that, that whispering, that shouting out of you are going to hell and you're not saved would have, would have caused me to start to waver. But thanks be to God, God was doing the work in my life and I just stand firm in what I believe. I said, listen to me, man, I know what I know. 
and I'm standing firm on what I know. I believe in the resurrected Christ. Yes, I, I, you, we, you might, we, you may, we can go back and forth all year long, all day long about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and Jesus only and so forth and so on. But listen to me. I believe what I believe and I am firm in my belief and no no voice is going to get me off of what I believe. I believe in the resurrected Christ and I'm secure in my salvation. I believe in what water baptism and I'm secure in my salvation. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Ras kata rebande. Ah, and the move of the spirit. I, I am a Pentecostal. I believe in a little holy deep sometime and I love it. <coughs> Pardon me. And I am and I am satisfied. Listen to me. The, the elementary stuff I am concrete in those. Can I speak to somebody tonight who have some doubts? Come on, don't be, don't be ever learning and not coming into the truth. Mighty God, you need a revelation of the resurrected Christ. My God, you need a God-given affirmation to this salvation that you have believed. Mighty God, mighty God, and the level that you have attained, don't feel bad, just hold on dear. Hold on to it until greater revelation come. I tell you the truth. <laughs> the man said to me, man, you're not saved. We believe in our heart that Jesus is the son of God and we confess it with our mouth. That is all and the matter is settled. Raskota, mighty God. Now let us move on to perfection. Let's settle the minor and move on to some major. Come on, my man. Let's move on to becoming God's battle axe. Let's move on to deliverance. Let's move on to evangelism. Let's move on to setting the captives free. Mighty God, no wonder Jesus repeat in the, in the synagogue, Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mighty God, and he has anointed me. Come on, you have been anointed. You have been called for service. Don't let the enemy begin to shoot darts of doubt. Don't let the enemy begin to start to make you question what you believe. And if you came through the right way, listen, as long as you came through Jesus Christ, you came the right way. Can I speak to somebody tonight? Graduate in the Holy Ghost. Graduate in the Spirit of God. Move off from the shallow. Come on. The prophet said, I was at the shallow. I think it was uh, uh, um, Jeremiah. Uh, someone would correct me here. And he said, listen to me. I go off into the shallow, the water at my ankle. I think it's Ezekiel, my apology. And it's, God said, come out a little further. The, the water reached me at my knee, the prophet said. I said, come for a little further. The spirit of the Lord bidding the water reach him at the waist. I said, come further, come further, till he said the water was all over me. Listen to me. God wants to be all over you. Rakota, sekete. God wants you to be, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God wants to be oozing out of your pores. <coughs> but you're not going to get there if you don't graduate in the spirit of God. If we're not graduating, then we're repeating. And the real truth is, after a few cycles, you start to backslide. You, you start the backsliding. You start the going back. 
dangerous place. Because the end result of that, brethren, the end result of that is you lose your eternal salvation. Come on. And we're going to examine some more things to prove that. Don't wonder Peter said, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Wait a minute. Hold on, panic man. Hold on to your salvation, brethren. By the power of the Spirit of God tonight, I, I, I beseech you, graduate in the Holy Spirit. Graduate. Come on, no man. It's full time to move from gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Look upon a little. Come on, no man. It's full time to be to be rasko taraba shekende. It's full time to, for some devils to just see and run. And, eh, come on, now. It, it, it's full time for some for some for some devil see and just start to run. Because they see that you are graduating. Yes, they see that you are graduating. Listen to me. I tell you the truth, and I lie not in Christ. I went through a very tough time about four years ago. I nearly lose my mind. And believe you me, I, I, I thought I was going to die. I tell you the truth. I see principalities and power manifest themselves. The spirit of suicide, the spirit of depression, you name it. And I tell you the truth, I cried to the Lord day and night, and God delivered me with a strong and outstretched arm. Man, I love the deliverance where that they deliver me. And I tell you, he put a new level of anointing on me. And when he put that anointing on me, he said to me, Gary, you see, with this level, you have to walk in love. Because if you look at somebody the wrong way, they might keel over with this level of anointing that's upon you. And I make it from that day, my heart's pursuit to love people as how Jesus loved people. And I tell you the truth, it's not easy. It's not easy. And he put something on me. That I tell you the truth, brethren, and I lie not in Christ. Because sometimes I don't have the time and he know it. Some devils, I don't even bat the eye. I just say, listen to me. I, I remember a particular situation. One devil coming to my apartment, man. I was working with a young lady and the devil got a whole her and when the devil manifests. I said to me, I said to, I said to her, I said, listen, <laughs> I said to the spirit rather, I said, listen to me. You see, this apartment is me parent for. Shut your mouth in here. And you're not going to cause no disturbance to the neighbor. And you're not going to behave in any road here. And I've shut you down till I already took your ass out. Come on, no man. There are some great levels when we graduate in the Holy Spirit. Come on, when we graduate in faith. When we graduate in the love of God and in the pursuit of the Spirit, God wants to open dimensions of himself to us. The more you get of God, it's like an antidote. It's like an immunization shot against the spirit of backsliding, against the spirit spirit that wants you to regress the mighty god can i tell you that some people are backsliding and going back because there is no fresh revelation ah from the dead saved all you hear is jesus 
saying, keep and sanctify. Pray for you, me, as I pray for you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Every time you hear testimonies in church, there's the same like a scratch record. Once I was blind and now I can see. You pray for me as I pray for you and vice versa. And God bless you and so forth and so on. You don't hear nothing of what God is doing for them because they're not graduating in faith. They're not graduating in the spirit and seeking a deeper encounter with God. Oh, hallelujah. Can I talk to somebody tonight? If you are one of them online, who every time pastor asks a testimony and you get up, virgin, once I was blind, now I can see. <laughs> Cut it out. Cut it out. You hide them over a long time. You're supposed to get some mighty God. Can I encourage? I'm not roughing you up, but I'm shaking you up, man. I'm not roughing you up, but I'm shaking you up. Mighty God. Can, can I admonish you to cut it out? 50 years you in a church and all you can talk about is once I was blind and now I can see. Come on, man. Check the backsliding level. Come on, man. Check it. Ah, and you get one testimony long time. One testimony long time from 1950. And we just hear it 2021. All we are here. I went with it, broke my foot. And this and, and you get one, and, and, uh, one testimony. Come on, graduate, Richard. It's a dangerous place to be in suspended animation. Because deception, which is one of Satan's most potent, and I would dare to say his most potent weapon, will make you feel comfortable in suspended animation when you're actually in full regression, graduate in the Holy Spirit. The next point I want to talk about is screening the voices that we encounter. You see, my, my, my ministry is a practical kind of a, a, a ministry. I, I, I'm a practical teacher. Mighty God. I, I get down to the nitty gritty. Amen. Amen. I get down to the I get down to some brute force action. Scream the voices. That you're here. My God, you have some people. <laughs> Everything them here from somebody who sound good and sound like it near near to the point. They run with it. No, 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 no. Not so. Not so. Watch this. Watch this. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. But the Holy Spirit, the blessed Holy Ghost, I love him. Don't you love him? Amen. He's my indwelling keeper. The Holy Spirit explicitly states. I love how this version near the amplifier render it. The Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the latter time some will turn away from the faith paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons listen to me listen to me brethren you have to watch, you have to watch, or oh, you watch all of them man we sit on Facebook live in there. You have to watch, how oh, you watch. God, your spirit. Amen. You know, me and, me and Pastor Shana K, God bless her, my beautiful wife. She's recouping too um, from a, a, a bout of attack from the enemy. We were having a discussion the other day. 
And we were reminiscing on some, and I'm not saying these people are under the influence of any spirit, no. I'm not saying that, or I'm not saying that these people were speaking um, from, you know, from the platform of seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. I'm just going to make a point. We were, we were reminiscing on some experience we had in, in our younger years in, in ministry, in church. And we were remembering a particular situation where uh, we were at a conference and, a, <laughs> and, a, and a, one of the speakers got up on the pulpit and was saying that if, you know, miracles happen and, you know, the experience the pre and gold start to drop out of people more gold teeth and you know teeth turn to gold and you know she get up and say who oh, want lose weight jump two time and you know <laughs> i'll tell you something brethren watch them things you know god on a poppy show business god not in a poppy show business he said uh, oh and we were moving in the and, and 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 we jump and by the time the sister jump two times she lose three pound well you know the jury is out on that watch those things i'm not saying that those people are necessarily under that influence but in the last days brethren a lot of christians mighty god are going to be deceived by seducing spirit watch me god made us emotional beings and we must be sensitive to our emotion but we mustn't live by our emotion because you see seducing spirits are there to tickle your fancy oh the bible talk about itching ears you want to hear something to make you feel nice no 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 listen to me brethren Watch the voices that are speaking to you because you have some voices that sound good. They sound doctrinal, doctrinally correct. They sound like they're coming from a good stream and a good flow and give you some nice words and beautiful speech and some five point step to progress and 10 point action plan for faith and this and that. And before you know it, ladies, they're trying to get into your underwear before you know it gentlemen that mighty god almighty can i talk to somebody tonight before listen to me before you know it i heard of a situation where one pastor who was telling the church sister that in order for her to be delivered she had to sleep with him and my god some of them did seducing spirit and doctrine of devils watch the voices brethren screen the voices brethren that are speaking test it my god get the word in you so that when you hear something through the ear gate, you can have a, a resounding board, that, that word written on the table of your heart to test what you're hearing against the soundness of the word. And if it doesn't match up, if it doesn't compute, if it doesn't register, vomit it out, reject it in the mighty name of Jesus, a seducing spirit is trying to get you to backslide. Can I speak to somebody tonight? Screen the voices. Oh, ah, listen to me. Ah, in the year 2021, God is showing me that 100 of you in the elevation room must sow $2,021. Huh? 
No, 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 no. Check scripture. God not talk to people about your money. The Bible says every man must purpose in them heart. Money giving is a mighty God. Mighty God. Money giving is a matter of the heart. So God deal with you on a one-on-one -on -one level. When the man of God or the woman of God say, brethren, listen to me. If you feel to bless but bless this ministry. If you are so inclined to sow a seed, sow a seed into this ministry. Or they tell you of a specific need. It's then left to you and the Holy Spirit to work out the amount and when and how. Listen to me. God don't talk to people about your money. Oh, oh, I'm seeing it. Oh, in the Lord said, oh, give me 10,000 US dollar and you will never be broke again for the rest of the life. Yeah, you're going to be broke when you take that 10,000 US dollar, give it. The Bible said God loves a cheerful giver, not one who is coerced, not one who feels that not by compulsion. It's a matter of the heart. Seducing spirit, taking God's people for, 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 for filthy lucre, wringing out the pockets of God's people. And when you look in the ministry, they're driving Benz, they're driving Bima, and the poor parishioners live in some rat tack shack. And need some help. Come on, brethren. Seducing spirits. And before you know, listen to me. I'll tell you something. Don't start me up in here with that. <laughs> I used to go to church in Jamaica. Prophet Bernard knew it very well. And, <laughs> I, you know, God had to remove me from that ministry. And one particular sister who went to that ministry called my wife one time and said to my wife, do you notice that in that ministry, only the pastor, wife, progressive? So why is that? Why is that? And if you would ever go to this person and pitch a business idea, they shoot you down. Keeping Oh my goodness, I don't want to even get into it. But watch out for these seducing spirits that are appealing to your to your desires, to your sensuality, mighty God, to your feel-good tank. Oh, you're going over. Oh, you in the year 2020. Oh, bada boom, bada bang, and you're crossing over. No, 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 no. Not if you know, not if you not if you know fix the altar of prayer. Come on. <laughs> not if you not get the altar of prayer right. You're not going, the only thing you're going over into is more stress and distress. Giving uh, you notice it's like a lot of motivational speakers in church, which is these days and ministry, telling people stuff to make them feel good, give them goosebumps. No, no, no. God is not a goosebump God. God is a God that tell you what you need to hear so that you can save your soul from hell. Raskata shende basete. Mighty God, we need to we need to put a filter on our ears. We need to say, Holy Spirit, make a filter on my ears so that I can screen what I'm hearing. Because watch me now, brethren. Watch me. The most important gate to you is your ear gate. Oh, I know that. The Bible never said faith come by seeing. The Bible says fear come by hearing. Come on, no man. Come on, no man. Your most important gate is your ear gate. Fear come it by hearing. So, if, so if, if you're not hearing the word to build faith and something else is speaking, what is the intent of that voice? What is that voice hoping to build in you? Watch out for the voices. 
The word tells us seducing spirits are out there and they come in with doctrines of devil to deceive God's people and trick God's people and then smear God's people. Come on, brethren. Come on. We have to reject it, even though it comes from reputable sources in our own view. Mighty God, if it's not lining up square and plumb with scripture and the word of God revealed to you, flush it. Flush it. Something wants to get you into regression. Something wants to pull you back. Something wants you to head on the road of backsliding. Because before you know it, listen, all of God's principle, it, 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 there is a counter to it. So, so Isaiah talk about here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, and we build. Yes, it's the, it's the same way. Uh, line upon line, lick, lick a nonsense here, lick a nonsense there. Here a little stupidity, there a little stupidity. Here a little um, um, doctrine of devil, here a little doctrine of devil. And before you know it, you're a full-blown, oh, yeah, yeah, brethren. Watch out for the voices. Scream the voices. Test the voices. We can't afford. When you go up on when you go on Facebook and you see and you, and you, and you see some of them on Facebook, the, 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 the first thing you see is cash up. The first thing they started to is give you a feel-good message. Nobody's calling people to repentance no more. Nobody's talking about holiness no more. Nobody's talking about prayer and building the altar of prayer no more. Come on, nobody's opening scripture. Some of them you go on the Facebook page, they don't open a word from the book. They don't they don't look at a word from the book. They don't turn the page all now. All you hear is I had a dream. I saw a vision. I hear a voice. I this and that. And before you know it, you, you start to follow them. Becoming prophetic word addict. And let me tell you something. <laughs> if you're seeking a word, you'll get it. Come on, brethren. In let your ears say, Holy Spirit, fine-tune my, my, my ear dial to the frequency of God. <clears throat> Come on, man. God wants to get through the clutter and the noise and he wants to speak to you. Watch out for the voices. The third point I want to make is this. No matter how fierce the fight, do not regress. No matter how fierce the fight, do not regress. Watch me. In this season, the enemy is attacking and he's attacking hard. We just come out of 2020 and some folks going to need a lot of prayer and counseling and encouragement. Because all are 2020 them depressed. Mental health issues skyrocket. The shutdown, the isolation, the uncertainty, and the news media just get people um, in a frenzy, in a panic. Cut off from family, cut off from social network, cut off from gathering, and some people plummet. And the enemy is capitalizing on these things. And he's attacking in sickness. 
I tell you, Monday, I had to rush Shana to the emergency room, but glory be to God. God give us a good report. The enemy is attacking. Amen. The enemy is attacking. Uh, uh, Pastor Diane made mention of Prophet Bernard and thank God. God is on the case and the man of God is mending. The enemy is attacking. But watch me. Man, can I stand up in the elevation room here tonight? Listen to me. When the enemy come at you hard, go, go harder. Because watch the alternative. Watch the alternative. Let's look at the alternative because the alternative is not pretty. Second Peter 2, 20 to 22. For if after they have escaped the defilement of the world through the knowledge, I'm reading from the English Standard Version, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That sounds like a warfare term in your escape the defilement. Come on, watch this now. They, if they are again entangled in them and overcome, watch this. So, so we escape. But God forbid we get entangled again in those defilements and they overcome us. Watch this. This is scripture now. The Bible said the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the Proverbs say has happened to them? The dog returned to his own vomit. The sow, after washing herself, returns to wallowing in the mire. No matter how the blows come in, brethren. There is no, just tell yourself, there is no backward escape road. It's forward I'm going in Christ. Listen to me. I rather to suffer with Christ than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Come on, brethren. It's high time now that you make up your mind. Not everybody going to like you. Not everybody going to see you. Not everybody going to approve you. Not everybody going to affirm you. As a matter of fact, some are going to seek to destroy you. As a matter of fact, pitfalls are being laid for you. You're going to get some serious blows. You're going to be persecuted and attacked. That must be resolved in your spirit but watch me what need a greater resolve need to be that no matter what comes your way you are determined to go forward in Christ you are good you are determined to go with the Holy Ghost to the very end the Bible said that Jesus for the, what was set before him, good mighty God, he, 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 never, he never get caught up with the suffering and the shame. He was fixated on you and I coming true. He was mighty God. He was fixated on your healing. He was fixated on making ah, a family, re renewing the family ties of God to his children. Come on. The Bible says for the joy that was set before him, Jesus pressed forward. Brethren, you and I have to resolve it tonight that we're going to press forward. Regression is no option because watch me. You're going to go to a worse state if you go back. If you go back, if remember, we're talking about the dangers and the consequences of backsliding. This is one of the most serious 
of consequences here of backsliding as it relates to your eternal salvation. Not only does not only does it does it does does one lose the eternal salvation, but Satan and and, and the way of dragging you down wants to make you a, a, an example. Wants to make you a spectacle. The thief comes to what? Steal, kill, destroy. He's not only satisfied with just getting it to backslide and then tomorrow he cut you off from the land of the living. Satan wants to make you a spectacle as he pulls you down, as he, as he entices one <clears throat> to regress. <clears throat> he wants to make you a spectacle and a laughing stock. Look at Look at, look at God's child. Look, look. Come on, you think all of those men who you see scandal reach in the pulpit, God was a warning them? They didn't get the warning? They didn't get this don't regress warning? They didn't get this don't regress red alert from the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit was sounding the bells. He was blowing the whistles. Don't go back. Don't, don't, don't go back. And they just allow themselves to slip. And the Bible tells us that the last state is worse than the first. The last state is worse than the first. Think about that. Peter is saying it is better to a person not to have known the way than to come and know the way and then regress. No, brethren, make it up in your minds tonight. Gird up the lines of your mind tonight with God's word. I'm going to go forward in Christ no matter what. I'm not going. Listen to me. <clears throat> Examine the territories that you have thus far taken with Christ. If, 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 just examine the, the overcoming grace that has brought you thus far in Christ. Mighty God, look at yourself in the mirror and really take a good survey. You are not who you once were. There are some significant changes, not superficial, not the surface level, but you, but you are, but, but something extraordinary has taken place from the core. Come on. Are we going to allow little circumstances and situations to cause us to give up all of that? No, 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 no. We have to keep moving forward. Watch me. If you take note of your armor, you will see that there is no backward armor. There is no backward armor. And if, if you study um, Paul's analogy of the Roman soldier and, and, and you put it in perspective in the formations that the Roman soldiers fight, Roman soldier never designed for retreat. So they don't have no armor for the back. How the Roman legion was designed to fight. They fight like a, 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 a unit that, that almost move like one organism. They have many battle formations. If you watch some of these movies, you will see it. So you have the front line. <clears throat> they have the ranks going right down. And, and they would use a formation where they would they would they would they would go forward with shields interlock and those behind would would thrust through the, the Roman legion the army that Paul analyzed for spiritual warfare in Ephesians six they no armor talk about retreat. If you look, he talk about the breastplate of righteousness, forward. The shield of faith, 
forward. The sword of the spirit, forward. The, 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 the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, forward. The belt of truth, that is so significant because the belt of truth is what? Hold down the shield, and the, the sword, the hold down the, the breastplate and thing, the helmet of salvation. All of these gears suggest forward movement. No place for retreat. Jesus echoed these same sentiments when Somebody said, Jesus, I'm coming after you now. I see, I see your ministry. I like what I see. You know, but just give me a chance. I'm going to bury my man. Jesus, hey, 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 hey. Watch this. Nobody who put him on to the plow and take it back worthy of me. So it's either me or you're going to do your business, brethren. Come on. Don't no back, no back pedaling here. Come on, let the back pedal in here. No, 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 no. Forward. Because the alternative in the rear view is not a place where any one of us would want to be. We have to keep moving forward. We have to keep pushing. Listen to me. That's why we cannot afford to joke. It's high time now. We know the God who we serve. It's high time now. We seek God for a personal encounter. It's high time now. We pursue God. With earnest hearts, hearts craving and longing, because we come too far by faith to afford to start backward pedaling. No, 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 no. We cannot afford it. We have to move forward in spite of. We have to move forward no matter what wind is blowing. No matter where you see everybody running up and down. And, and everybody is, oh, huh? and, and COVID. And, and, and listen to me. You know, Christians, Christians are wise. Oh, my boy, uh, uh, yeah, COVID time now, you know, you have to watch how you go up on the elevation room line. Come on, a digital thing this day in your house. <laughs> No, you know, people, we don't know if people love give excuses if we be absent from the things of God. Uh, um, prophet, excuse me tonight, you have to be wise because there's a COVID going around. COVID no jump through screen. Mighty God, come on. Uh, my God Almighty, know that we see the day approaching. Know that we see the day approaching. Me no know you have so much wise Christian in a church. A pure wisdom church should have gone for it already, you know. Because everybody has some wise people. But, but <laughs> listen to me, brethren. We have to move forward, even now that we see the day approaching. What we see approaching now is time to buckle down more than ever. What we see approaching now is time to get serious with God more than ever. What we see approaching now is time to come out of uncertainty zone and get into certainty zone. We must know what we know and hold on to what we know and move forward in what we know. Glory to God. The last point I want to touch on is don't allow yourself to go off real. Don't allow yourself to go off real. And there are two scriptures I want to look at tonight in this regard. The first one is Proverbs 29 and verse 1. 
I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. It says, he who has hardened his neck and refuses instruction after being often reproved, corrected, or criticized in the positive will suddenly, bro suddenly be broken beyond repair. And I hear Prophet Bernard talk about apostasy. The total rejecting of Christ. The total turning away from Christ. Let me read it again. And I'm going to read it um, this time. From the American Standard Version. He that being often reproved, corrected, get to slap with the whip, get to slap with the rod, not to break you, but to bear a perfect fruit, to bring forth good fruit. And harden at his neck, harden at his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. And then the next scripture I want to look on concerning this is Hebrews 6. And when Prophet Bernard uh, taught the other day, he looked at this in relation to apostasy. For it is impossible in the case of those, English Standard Version here, who have once been enlightened, come on, the man, eyes open, spiritual eyes see the light, who have tasted the heavenly gift, Makasekete, speaking in tongues. The gifts of healing, the move of the spirit of deliverance. You Marco shaking the Holy Ghost, help me here. You pierce the heavenly gift. You get a touch of what heaven is going to be like. And I've shared in the Holy Spirit. Come on, the Bible tells us that we have been made to be partakers of his divine nature. He put the Holy Spirit in us. And we feel his quickening power. And I've tasted of the goodness of the word of God. Have any one of you online ever read the word and literally taste sweetness in your mouth? I have. I taste like, I, I know I understand what David said, sweeter than the honey from the honeycomb. Watch this. Of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again. It is impossible, the word of God said, to restore them again to repentance. Since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up in contempt for Land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to, for those who say it was cultivated, receive a blessing from God. But if it bear thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near being cursed and its end is to be burned. Brethren, we don't want to go off the rails. So watch me. Take the correction of God with joy. When God rough you up, just say, I, Papa, oh, Daddy, 
take your time with me. But turn. When God shake you up, come on, no man. Don't harden your heart and stiffen your neck. Be supple. Be supple. Let, it, let, let the Holy Spirit chisel you. Let the Holy Spirit mold you. Because his intent for you is good. He's, he's fashioning the image of Christ. To supersede what is there. Before Christ, I never like what I see. But now I see Jesus being formed. I love what I see. Come on, brethren. Don't go off real. Don't go off real by hardening the heart and stiffening the neck. You know, just, just wrench up and resisting God. Resisting his word, resisting his teaching. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not, you know, you're not going to come into to, 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 to some things at the same time with some somebody. But 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 don't don't just don't just don't just reject it. Prayerfully seek it out. Lord, reveal this thing to me. Humble yourself. But don't stiff up and behave as if you're your own big man. Come on, don't, don't, don't be stiff and, and, and rigid. But, but be humble and pliable in God's hand. So that when his corrective uh, measures come against you, you can take note. And I thank you so much, man of God, brother Kevin. The Lord disciplines those he loves. This is not for your hurt. This is not for this is not like some of our Jamaican parents. Are we Jamaica? This is not like some of us Caribbean parents. You Caribbean folks, you know what you're talking Come here, come here, boy. And you see one nice strap. And and the whoop. Out of anger. No, God doesn't discipline out of anger and, and, and brutality to satisfy his anger. God loves us and he wants the best for us. Don't allow the enemy to cause us to go off rail through rebellion. Rebellion. Is a fast track to apostasy, the place of no return. Mighty God. And watch me, brethren. Any one of us that's found in any anywhere between these four points, three. Because one real is a point of no return. Any one of us is found between points one two to three. Come on, man. Make an about turn. Make an about turn in Jesus' mighty name. Don't break free from the restraint of the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes I wonder how somebody can 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 get a taste of Jesus and the next thing you know them are Rasta or them are or them are them turn Muslim. Reading something and 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 totally denounce the Lord. Mighty God and and claims and the, and you know and. I know somebody personally who used to say that I used to go to church and nothing was nothing never fulfilling. And since I start practicing Buddhism, it's like a fine piece. I say, huh? Come on, Virgin Apostasy is going off the rail into the place of no return. Let's not. Let's not. Resist 
the Holy Spirit when he reproves us. It's the same vein, Proverbs 29 and Hebrews 6, 4 to 8. It's the same vein. Because you see, nobody gets to apostasy without passing all the flashing lights of warning from the Holy Spirit. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Look at what the scripture said. Who have tasted, who have sheared in, who have been enlightened. Mighty God. And, and taste of the power. We just get a little touch of the powers that we're going to experience in glory. Oh, Rastataraba me. Man, we can't afford to go out the rings. Don't allow yourself to go off real. Humble yourself. Come on back. Be, 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 be teachable. Yes, be teachable. Come, you know, be like a little child, Jesus said. Little children. When you discipline them, they still want to come close to you. Come on. Don't, don't resist the spirit of God. You know, I pray that God will give us the heart again to, 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 to be truly joyful in tribulation. Like the early church. You can imagine Paul and Silas, you know, where they just got arrested and got a severe beat. You can imagine when Paul and Silas got free and, and, and Paul looked at Silas and said, Boy, Silas, what a way them whip with Jesus. What a way they, 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 they brutalize us, Jesus. And, and Silas just said, Look for my cut right here. So Paul said, No, man, look for the big one around here. So rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ, knowing that these tribulations and testing. They are working out some great things in them, bringing them up to the place of maturity into a more perfect image and, reflect, and reflection of Christ. Don't go off real brethren. Can I speak to somebody tonight on a bow turn? Come on, man. Hit right full rudder. Make that, make that, make that whole the turn, man, whole right full rudder back to Christ, back to the Holy Spirit, back to the foundation of truth, the word of God, mighty God, mighty God, dispel fear and doubt, dispel the unbelief. Don't you know that the backsliding spirit and the, is cousin to the spirit of unbelief? The backsliding spirit is the cousin to the spirit of unbelief. Them is family. Mighty God. Mighty God. They are family. Get rid of all doubts and unbelief, brethren. Come to a place of certainty. If, if, if you're not certain about some things in, 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 your, in your love walk with the Lord, say it out in the prayer room and, and be prayed for, man, and get to Pastor Diane, call Pastor Granville, whichever one. And, and, and when the man of God is back on his feet, Brother Cavill, and say, listen to me, I have some doubts here. Listen, we need, you have to dispel these doubts. Because the end result of backsliding is not pretty. It's hell's fire. But the journey to hell's fire is not a lovely one. It's 
full shame and disgrace. Because the enemy seeks to make you a spectacle. Don't go off real. I close it up tonight by making an appeal, brethren. Backsliding is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. As you would have heard Prophet Bernard been teaching. It's not an overnight process. It's a gradual progression, event upon event. Sometimes it starts out with some unholy curiosities. Be careful of that. Sometimes it starts out with some little innocent suggestions. Be careful of that. Set up guardrails. Set up guardrails through prior. Set up guardrails through studying an in-depth study of God's word. Come on. Let's get some practical application to your faith. When you come to the prior room and you hear uh, the teaching by God's servant, don't just take it and, and, and feel good that you get some spiritual knowledge. Come on, make some practical application. When you hear the teaching about altar and, and the man of God teach about altar, come on, uh, be determined to build your family altar. Be determined to build your personal altar. Be, be determined uh, to, to, to build a, your, your church altar. Get involved. Get to, to practical application so that you grow, you graduate in the spirit so that you are able to screen. You have a good resounding board built up. Ah, uh, by the word of God written on your heart. So you're able to scream the voices that are speaking. And there are many voices that are out there today. Many voices. And unfortunately, some people have been carried away by these voices. So that we can build up spiritual strength to stand the test, to press forward. The Bible tells us that physical exercise have some profit, but godly training is profitable for all things. Lift some spiritual muscle, brethren. Develop some spiritual muscle so that when the challenges come, you can resist and press forward. And don't allow yourself to go off real. Don't allow yourself to even look at the door that goes to apostasy. Avoid it through humility and submission to God's processing in your life to find in the place of joy in God's spirit to take in your trials and tribulation in stride. Not why me, Lord, but Thank you for choosing me, Lord, and give me the grace to go through that which you have ordained for me to walk through. Because it's working to my good, and I'm going to be better for it. Brethren, tonight, let's come off the backsliding street. Let's come off the backsliding path. We can't put our eternal salvation on the line like that. No. Let's stand fast and in full assurance of faith in Christ. And let's press in and be determined to walk out this walk, to run this race. And like Paul, we can say at the, at the, at, at the, at the closing day, at our departure day from this earth realm, I have fought the fight. Yes, I, 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 have, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And now I'm confident, Raskota, Rabashe, that 
a, a crown of life is awaiting me over yonder that Jesus Christ himself is going to give to me. Take stop, brethren. Make amends. Turn while it is still time to do so. And let's move forward in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you.